Number one then, the first question in paper one of the 2021 Advanced Higher Maths Resource Paper, four marks for, just carry out some differentiations. In part A, you've got a product, so you're going to use the product rule. In part B, you've got a quotient, so you're going to use the quotient rule. Well, in part A, it's the product rule, so they each just take their turn. So the net rate of change is equal to the rate of change of one of them, keeping one constant, plus the rate of change of the other one, keeping the other one constant. So differentiating that first, 3x squared, leaving that alone. Then leaving that alone and seeing what happens to this one, well, e to the 5x just stays as e to the 5x, except it gets multiplied by a 5. Then just write that again. You could have just put that to the front and finished there, I suppose. So that's 3x squared e to the 5x plus 5x cubed e to the 5x. Now they've just left it like that and they're given the two marks as starting and finishing the usual thing. Do one of them first and then do the other one. And then they're quite happy with that because I suppose it did say just differentiate it. Well, but that could be tidied up because they've both got an x squared and they've both got an e to the 5x. That leaves a 3 there and a 5x there. So times, I'll just put it the way around, 5x plus 3. Or maybe I could have put that to the front. That would have been neater, but you didn't need to do that. It was enough just to go here. And so in part B, given that y equals tan x over x to the 6 plus 1, find dy by dx. Now, don't write that as a product and use the product rule. You could if you wanted. You're just in for an awful lot more writing and some algebraic manipulation. It's the quotient rule. The quotient rule's there for a reason because it's pre-packaged. It saves you going through that initial stage. Just use that final result. The final result is what you will inevitably end up with if you decide to plod through the product rule would be you've got the square of the denominator and then on top, because that would have been in the product rule, power negative one, so we differentiate it by a minus. It'll be differentiate the top, leave that alone, but minus, leave that alone, differentiate the bottom. Same order as the product rule. Except I don't want to differentiate that and put it down first. So I don't want that x bumping into this expression here as if they're both part of what tan's operating on. So I'll write that second, because it's cotton, put them in we like. So I'll leave that, there's the one I'm leaving alone, and here's the one I'm differentiating, but I'm going to write it in this position, because it looks neater there, and it keeps that wee exposed x safe from bumping into anything. A bit, bit more space. Now leave it alone, normally I've left it alone here, but I'm going to again put that at the end, so the wee exposed x is out of harm's way, and differentiate this, well that's just 6x to the 5, and then leave that alone tan x. Now, that's it done, because there's not anything you can do with that. Because they were totally different types of expressions. It was like oil and water. Nothing was ever going to simplify or cancel down. So the way they're given the marks is, it's just the usual. Start it off, finish it off. Start it off with a square denominator and then finish it off. The only thing you could do to that possibly, it wouldn't actually make it look much better, would be you could replace the sec squared with a 1 plus tan squared. And then the top would be a quadratic in tan. That wouldn't really be much of an improvement.